the street with the beautiful view, Bellevue Strasse, has long since disappeared, swept away in August 1961 by the building of the Berlin Wall. But millions of tourists come here all the same to gaze at the view that has replaced it. One wonders how many of them remember the first days of the wall they come to look at. It is no longer possible to jump from East to West Berlin today. There are still wreaths and crosses along the wall, but they evoke past, not present dramas. We live today in the era of détente. The wall belongs to an earlier period. It is, for most, an outdated feature of the Cold War. An iron curtain has fallen across Europe. Churchill's famous words to President Truman in 1945 referred to the demarcation line from Lübeck to Trieste, agreed with Stalin, and which still cuts Europe into two ideologically separate halves today. Iron Curtain and Berlin Wall a part of the out-of-fashion vocabulary of the Cold War. And yet the demarcation line and the wall, though largely open to people from the West, still exist as a physical barrier for the millions of people in Eastern Europe. The methods used to stop people getting out of the East vary greatly. Worst are the automatic scatter guns used by the East Germans. Triggered off by trip wires, they spray dum-dum bullets at any would-be escaper. Some 24,000 have been installed along the inter-German frontier. Deterrents are so efficient that few people are actually killed today at the border between the two German states. But at least 180 have been shot dead by border cards since the wall was built and the frontier closed in 1961. Thousands of others have been arrested and imprisoned for trying to escape. In the north of Germany, the frontier is formed by the river Elbe. The exact demarcation line has never been agreed on here, so West and East patrol these waters. Confrontation is avoided by both sides. Cameras, rather than guns, do the shooting. Germans rely on a network of watchtowers to guard the frontier. 996 of them stand along the border. 
one tower every 1,350 meters. They seem incongruous when one sees that the Elbe itself is an international waterway with barges from east and west. Economic necessity, rather than détente, dictates this, no doubt. As cooperation increases between East and West, more and more people from the East have to be trusted by the authorities to travel West. Sailors, pilots, lorry drivers, as well as industrialists and diplomats. But the authorities, particularly in East Germany, are very careful whom they let out. A flock of sheep is allowed through this gate in the frontier fence every day but the shepherdess and her dog have to stay behind and watch the sheep go down to water. Further south, the demarcation line is marked by posts which trusted East German patrols sometimes come out to repaint. The real frontier installations are some 50 meters back from the line itself, so there is a kind of East German no man's land in front of them. This patrol we surprised outside the fence hid for hours in the long grass rather than be filmed. But the game of hide and seek between East and West ended to our advantage when our cameraman found a vantage point to film from. Patrols in no man's land are rare. They always include two officers and no conscripts. Border guards have more chance than most of escaping. Because of this, they are virtually never seen alone. Nobody is trusted and the penalties for letting people escape are extraordinarily harsh. On a road outside the city of Cologne, three young cyclists train each day. They hope to be selected for the West German cycling team. One of them, Dietmar Schlittchen, in the white vest, has the worst behind him. He escaped from the east when a frontier guard on June the 9th, 1977. With characteristic courage, he agreed to return to the scene of his escape for us, staying this time within a few feet of East German territory. It must be strange coming back here. Yes, of course, it's strange coming back to the place one escaped. But it is also fairly amusing to see the place again, because at the time of my escape, it was dark. Now it's light. I can see all the details. From this side, this time. Anyway, it's nicer to look at it from this side, though I'm opposed to this frontier in principle. Is there no danger for you? No, there's no danger for me. They could shoot you. There are too many people here, and I'm well guarded by the federal frontier guards. What would happen otherwise? No, I'm on federal land. I'm a citizen of the Federal Republic. I'm a German. They have no right whatsoever to shoot at me. Do the people up there know you? When we arrived a few moments ago, there were two men on guard. They will have immediately sent a report to the company, and now some officers have just arrived. They will observe and take notes. One thing's sure, they've recognized me. This was the best sector for me to try, because there were no mines and because I could run along beneath the bridge unseen from the watchtower. You were on duty up there? I was there in that tower. And there were two of you? Yes. The greatest problem was to find a way to trick my colleague into allowing me to leave the tower. 
How did you manage it? <laughs> I told him I had to relieve myself, but I couldn't wait, so he allowed me to go. So I went down to the bridge. Behind it, there are stone steps going down to the river. I continued down to the Vera. I pretended to relieve myself, looked round surreptitiously at my colleague, and he was busy on the phone. So I stepped into the water and went onto the bridge. The same would no longer be possible now. No, they've put up a barrier now, and I don't know what exactly. Anyone trying it now would have to step further into the river, whereas I was able to stick close to the wall and the barbed wire and only got water up to my knees. I came out on this side and then ran along the bridge. That's still GDR territory. Yes, all this land here is East German, but I was out of sight. I couldn't be seen. My colleague could only hear me from the watchtower. So I ran down to that corner at the end of the bridge. That was a crucial moment because I could be seen again and he could shoot me. I stopped briefly turned to see if my colleague hadn't come along the bridge to look for me, and then I crouched down in the grass. How long did all this take? From the watchtower to that corner by the house, about five minutes. And how long did you stay here? Ten, fifteen seconds, I suppose. And then did you run? No, I crawled. The grass was longer at that time, so I crawled over to the house where I knew I was finally safe. Until I got there, I was afraid they would shoot me. Really? Well, it wouldn't have been difficult to kill me and to drag my corpse back to their side. It was night time and there was nobody around. Once safe, Dietmar ran to this house where a light was on. In the five longest minutes of his life, he had passed from an East German watchtower to a West German home, from one world to another. <laughs> Further south, the so-called Iron Curtain seems at first sight to have disappeared. Between Czechoslovakia and Austria, there is not always even a barrier to mark the borderline. This Austrian horse and cart is half in the east and half in the west. The track is international. The tractor behind it is in Czechoslovakia. Some Czech peasants are allowed to work, apparently unsupervised, within a few steps of Austrian territory. I can't speak, I can't hear. Though he had spoken to us first, it was clearly to say that he wasn't allowed to talk. I don't speak German. I can read Czech and Russian, but only speak dialect. Perhaps he knew there were soldiers nearby. But we do know that had he wanted, he could have stepped over the border into Austria with us. The authorities clearly trusted him, as they do all those allowed close to the border. The real frontier installations are at least a kilometer back.
In places, it is hard to see the barbed wire along the frontier between Hungary and Austria, but it runs uninterrupted along that border all the same. Like the Czechs, the Hungarians have agreed with the Austrians to keep their more formidable frontier installations several kilometers back. This avoids incidents, but though the frontier is peaceful, there is at times a nasty atmosphere, as this little scene shows. This Hungarian peasant saw us, ignored us, finally waved and walked away. There were soldiers very near. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? 500 meters further on, the peasant ignored my calls, but we saw that he was now closer to the demarcation line. Don't take pictures. A Hungarian soldier who witnessed the scene was anxious to stop us filming. Conversation in Hungarian was difficult, but the gist was clear. Guten Tag. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Ein bisschen. So, ein bisschen. Wir sind aus Frankreich. Meanwhile, the peasant had come close enough to the frontier fence to be able to hear us. A high wind made conversation difficult, so he resorted to eloquent mimicry. Most refugees from Eastern Europe find themselves first of all in the huge Treiskirchen camp south of Vienna in Austria. It is an extraordinary place where some 1,400 people from all over the world, 75% of them from Eastern Europe, live on average five months before getting permission to move to their adopted country. Many come out by car with holiday visas, but more and more, usually dissidents, are stripped of their citizenship and given exit visas. Paul Steriu, his wife and child, were let out of Romania in this way. We signed the letter from Paul Goma. The letter addressed to the Belgrade Conference. And after three months of repression and harassment by the security people and the Romanian police, we finally got a stateless passport and came here, where we are waiting to leave for the United States. I was ill-treated in front of my wife and child by three people in Bucharest. They took our child away because the Romanian state considers we're not capable. You are not capable of being parents? Yes, that's it. You had already been in trouble. Yes, I had crossed the frontier with my wife on the Black Sea, which we tried to cross in a rubber box to Turkey. 
la mere 3 și T, la boat se But the sea was very rough, and the boat capsized in the Black Sea, and we... You found yourselves in Bulgaria? Yes, in Bulgaria. We were arrested and immediately escorted back to Romania, where I was condemned to three years in prison for illegally passing the frontier, and my wife, two years. But Stereo's story should not hide the fact that the era of detente has brought with it great benefits for many in socialist countries, in particular in Hungary, which was the only socialist country to allow us to film on her territory. Though cars are searched and waiting can be long, one can see that people from all East European countries, except East Germany, cross into the West here. The Hungarians do not seem deterred in their liberalization policies by the fact that some of these tourists ask for political asylum once in the West. Even between the German states, things are better than they were. West Germans and West Berliners can visit the East quite easily. The same applies to old and handicapped people from the East wanting to visit the West. New agreements have been signed. Traffic on the transit motorways across East Germany to West Berlin is easier. And all would be well were it not for the fact that young people, anybody in fact with a useful life in front of him, cannot leave East Germany legally. This girl is in East Berlin with her mother. Her fiancé is standing on a platform for tourists west of the wall. She is unable to join him in the West because she is neither a pensioner nor a disabled person. So they must meet like this across the wall. On this particular day they were out of luck. He was seen and the police immediately arrived. They failed to identify the girl whose only crime it was to have waved to her fiancé in the West. And this all happened in front of the People's Solidarity Club. No picture of détente would be complete without the example of Finland, which has 1,200 kilometers of common frontier with the Soviet Union. There are few official crossing points at the border, and those there are are mainly used by commercial traffic. Finland has shown that cooperation with the East is possible on a very large scale. 23% of its foreign trade is with Comic-Con countries. Economic cooperation, often born of necessity, has spearheaded detente both here and elsewhere in Europe. But the Finns have gone further than any other capitalist country, no doubt because their geographical position gives them little option. They don't just export goods but manpower. Hundreds of Finnish workers travel each day across the border between the Finnish town of Imatra and Svetogorsk in the Soviet Union. They are building a huge paper mill complex for the Russians.
President Kekkonen recently suggested that as many as 80,000 Finns are now engaged directly or indirectly on contracts for the Soviet Union. In a country where 180,000 are out of work, that is a very large number. The workers require no passports. Each has a three-part identity card. One part is left with the Finnish border guards. One is given to the Soviet border guards 100 meters further on. And the worker keeps the third whilst on Soviet territory. Controls are strict and filming of the Soviet side is forbidden by the Finns. Helsinki bends over backwards to make sure that the Soviet authorities have nothing to complain about. But in Finnish eyes, that kind of apparently excessive politeness is a necessary part of détente. Churchill spoke of an iron curtain stretching down to Trieste. This is no longer the case. The barbed wire ends at the triangle formed by the meeting of Hungary, Austria and Yugoslavia. Or rather, instead of continuing to Trieste between Austria and communist Yugoslavia, it continues eastwards and separates Hungary and Bulgaria from Yugoslavia, which is therefore today in no sense behind an iron curtain. Opening up frontiers in both directions is clearly an essential part of détente. Yugoslavia and Finland, and to a lesser extent Hungary, have shown this. But East Germany, whilst encouraging West Germans to come eastwards, has done all she can to close her frontier more hermetically than ever to her own citizens. At a cost of one million marks per kilometer, a so-called modern frontier is being built to keep people in. Work has been going on for several years and is carried out by conscripts, guarded at all times by professional and therefore trusted soldiers. In summer, the conscripts are made to remove their shirts for easy identification. If they step over the red wire behind them to the west, they are liable to be shot on sight. Détente can only work if both sides want it to. The border between East and West Europe today shows this very clearly. In cases where no fundamental problems exist, as between Hungary and Austria, the border is no longer a dividing line between two worlds. But in the case of Germany, a country and people remain divided. That fundamental problem must be solved if the Iron Curtain between the two German states is ever to disappear.